ever notice how tyrannical policy enforcers like to get all handsy and put their paws all over you when they consider you a suspicious person? Well, just use a CCM 19115, sir. Hey, don't touch me. Okay, please if you stay touch away from me, my vehicle. If you touch me, I'm not going to get law enforcement involved. I'm going to take care of myself right. if you put your hands on me. What do you think, Dakota? Is suspicion a felony or a misdemeanor? I don't know, senor, but they better not put their paws on me. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. But here's the deal. So here's the deal. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? How about that? Here's the deal. heading south on Three Points Road. This video comes from our friend, Big Nick, South Florida Accountability. If you haven't subbed his channel, take a look at his content and do that right now. In just a couple videos on his channel, you'll learn how to intellectually defend yourself from the deceptive practices of law enforcement as they seek to gain control over people who are ignorant of their tactics. All right. Are you are. Do you need any help or anything? Are you a sheriff? Can I help you? Yeah, you have a badge Can number or anything? Do you have any ID? Why would I give you ID? I want to make sure you're okay. you have any ID or anything? How is my ID going to tell you if I'm okay or not? All right. Now think about how nonsensical this is. I need to see your ID to see if you're okay. First of all, how is it legitimate for one man to request that another man disclose his identity for no reason? And by the way, one of the main reasons you don't want to give a cop or would be cop your ID is because these interactions generate a police report. When your name goes into a police report, it's never a benefit to you. Maintain your anonymity when you can. Do you have any weapons on you or anything? Do you? Sir, do you have any weapons or anything on you? Do you have any weapons on you? You mind if I search your vehicle? I love Nick's tactic here. Not only is he not answering this guy's questions, he's asking questions of his own, which further highlights how ridiculous all these stops are. This reminds me of James Freeman's hilarious encounter with this detective when James himself started putting cop caliber questions back on the law enforcer. What are you working on right now? Several cases. Okay. What, what is this about? Are you working on something right now? Am I? Yeah. Yeah, I am. All right, what are you working on? What are you working on? It doesn't matter what I'm working on. I'm asking you, what are you doing here taking pictures? Where have you uh, Where have you been today? Have you been here all day? Or have you been out and about a little bit? What is this about? Who are you? I'm, I'm asking the questions. Where have you been today? No, have you been I'm, here? I'm asking the questions. You're on this property. You're, you're on this property, so you need to ask answer my questions are you drunk why are you slurring your words today so have you have you been here all day or have you been out have you been to the bar today at all who are you have you been to the bar today who are you? i'm an investigator investigator for who investigative journalist i investigate uh corrupt officials so i'm wondering where have you been today have you been here all day or have you been out at the bar at all working on a fraud case that's okay. where i've been okay have you been to the bar at all today no okay you got any drugs on you? Have you used any drugs today? What a ridiculous question. That's not a ridiculous hey. question. Do you know where he's been today? Uh, I don't, <clears throat> I, no, I don't keep tabs on him. I've okay. Been on the about. <clears throat> Do you know what time his shift started? Uh, not off the top of my head. Okay. Um, does he usually drink on the job or? No? no. Not, not that anybody knows of for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Have you guys ever breathalyzed him? While he's been on the job, would you would you submit to a breathalyzer for me right now? You're ridiculous. You know that. Same. You've got about five minutes to get out of here, right now. Or what? Or what? You're you're on my on property. Portland. This isn't your yeah, property. Yeah, shut the hell up. Get out of here now. What'd you say? I said shut up and get out. No, of here. No, you get out of here now. Hey, you better get it. You better get your boy. Get your butt back in your office you and do your up. job. You shut up. And get you out get of here. your butt back in your office huh? and do your job. No. 
You quit drinking on the job. You understand me? Whatever. You punk ass. You get your ass back in there. You don't look back here again. I'll be watching you. <laughs> James Freeman is like a cop whisperer, turning the psychological tables on him and revealing to the world how power hungry these cops really are. Now back to Big Nick. Have a uh, gentleman filming the rear of the station to make sure everything's okay with the gentleman. Filming, video re recording the rear of the station. Black male, 5'8". Six 6'2". Two. Six Are you two. serious? 6'2". How much do you weigh? About 220. Thank you. 220. Extremely good looking. Extremely good looking. Not at this time. Well, just use the CCM 19115, sir. Hey, don't touch me. Okay, please. If you touch me, if you touch me, I'm not going to get law enforcement involved. I'm going to take care of myself right. if you put your hands on me. Outside. Right now I'm on foot. I have a uh, marked vehicle. An unmarked vehicle. Yes. You're blocking traffic, man. You're you're the only one out here violating the law right now. You're the only one violating the law. Yes, correct. You told me to get away from Thank his vehicle. Lady. This is my vehicle. This is a taxpayer's vehicle. All right, sir, I understand. Do not claim ownership to the taxpayer's vehicle. This is the vehicle that we authorize you to use, okay? It's not your vehicle. So you do not tell the public to stay away from the public vehicle. I All right? Sure. You okay? What part of me look like I can't tell you if I'm okay or not? Is there a certain part of me that looks like that? You don't think I have the, the ability to let you know if I'm okay or not? I'm holding a handheld device, recording you, speaking with you, and you're asking me if I'm okay. Is that like a cold word for maybe he's that erratic? So send the sheriff. Hopefully they don't mistake their taser for a weapon. That wouldn't be anything like that, would it? I mean, you guys don't like transparency? You guys don't like the public to come see where our money goes? Is that what it is? Or I have to explain to you my every detail in life. And for a lot of these guys, that is what it is. There are three things that state agents really don't like. Transparency, accountability, and individual liberty. They hate encountering somebody that they can't steamroll over and manipulate. Emergency management officer. Don't you have more pressing needs to do than be a Darren? Correct. You should close your door, that's very dangerous. At least move your car up or park. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, Chef Gregory Tony knows who I am. So I would suggest you move your vehicle. You're creating a very dangerous situation. Yeah, I understand that, sir. Again, are you okay? Are you okay? You're not answering the questions. I don't have to. This is America, right? That's correct. I do have the freedom of speech and the Fifth Amendment, right? I certainly do. So what is the problem that I'm not answering the question? Is that within my rights? It certainly is. Now, I tell you what. You're a public official on duty, right? Right? Sir, how can I help you? I need you to identify yourself, including, including your station ID number, whatever you may have. My ID number is 19115. My last name is Yavna. Can you spell that? Y A. One second, sir. Go ahead, say that again. Yes. Y A V N E H. Yavna. And your first name? Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan.
See this technical response you did? That's the disconnect between the government and civilians. What a normal person should have done was observe, pull over their car, come out and say, hey, you like taking pictures? Are you doing photography? Is there anything you're working on? No, your first response is, am I okay? Do I have any weapons on me? Well, I mean, w w is that what you guys are taught? To think that the people that literally pay your salary are your enemy? Is that what you guys are taught? Absolutely not. So why would you approach me so hostile? Why would you do that? Look at the way you parked. You can't say you wasn't hostile. Look how you parked. You jumped out on me like I'm committing some major offense and not exercising the very First Amendment of our United States Constitution. What's your justification for that? I'll tell you what. I'll explain to you if you stand over there, and I'm going to actually move my car a little bit, if you don't mind standing right there. Absolutely. I would love to hear your explanation of this. Don't get too distracted, John. Come explain yourself to me. Obviously, they're telling you they know who I am. They know this is what I do. I pose no threat. So why are we still conducting this call, Jonathan? Why don't we end the call and come have a conversation with a member of the public? That sounds great. I'll be back there. I'll call you if I need If you need anything. Wow. All right, perfect. Thank you. So tell me how and why do you assume I pose a threat? I don't assume you pose a threat. I'm Your actions dictate okay. different, Jonathan. Your actions were a lot different. You gotta look at it from my point of view. I'm not gonna bring the whole, I'm not gonna bring the whole statistics about the probability of me being harmed by law enforcement based strictly on the way I look. I'm not gonna bring that whole thing up, even though I just did. But you literally blocked traffic, left your door open, left your door open in a tactical move. You asked me very, very uh, personal questions, right? Obtrusive questions, whether I'm okay, am I armed, do I have ID, all for what? Do you guys take it, did you take an oath to the Constitution? Are you okay? Jonathan, we can have a conversation, but it has to go two ways. Did you take an oath to the Constitution? Oh, you won't answer that question. You won't answer that question. All right, we have a sergeant on my scene. I'm doing well, Sergeant. What's your name and your badge number? It's Sergeant Walker, 11430. Thank you. Now, Jonathan, explain the situation right, Jonathan. Don't say you stopped and asked me. Tell them how you stopped. You perceived me as some type of threat. You stopped the car right here. You had your door open. You was in tactical mode. You asked me very invasive questions. Am I okay? Uh, do I have ID on me? Do I have any weapons on me? And you still haven't answered the question. What is it about me that make you think that I pose a threat? Instead of just a journalist out here taking B-roll footage. Why why you go straight to the to the worst? Okay. What's your last name so I can address you appropriately? Nah, that ain't gonna happen. He can, he know it. He knows it. But we were having a conversation. Did you did you take an oath to the Constitution, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm gonna leave you with the Did story. you take an oath to the Constitution? I believe you did. And if you yeah. did, the very first amendment yeah, to the Constitution is the what? The Constitution. freedom of press, Jonathan. Right. So whenever you see someone doing a lawful activity, Jonathan, don't perceive them as a threat where you have to block traffic, jump out of your car like you have some type of arrest of power. How you doing? Don't do that, Jonathan. I mean, I was hoping no one to come out here because my last video is about the Brown County Sheriff's Office has been great. But now you're going to be the thumbnail for these people to know what not to do to the public. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I mean, what's up, Nick? <laughs> I'm not Jonathan. Sergeant, you know, I, I, I'm only out here to bridge a gap. I'm only out here to show that this is okay with them so they don't have to be afraid of the public. I've never had a problem. I know you haven't. I know you haven't. So, you been okay? I'm all right. You know what? I'm going to leave you now. I know you have better things to do. You're, you're the supervisor on duty right now, so I have to let you kid to your, your underlings. I'm going to leave, but I think Jonathan learned. I think he knows now, all right? Hey, Sergeant, you be safe, okay? All right. Big Nick, South Florida Accountability at the back gate of the Broward County Sheriff's Office. Out. In my opinion, the world is a far better, more transparent place because of people like Big Nick, 
James Freeman, San Joaquin Valley Transparency, and all the frontline auditors out there trying to bridge the gap and hold cops accountable. I'll leave the links to Nick and James's video in the description and in the pinned comment. If you visit them, let them know High Impact Flick sent you. And I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored shadow ban video. You are now under investigation. To be clear, it has not been proven that Detective Mike Jardine is or was drinking on the job. Subscribe for more tyranny-busting content.